Good uh, morning, folks. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Ivan Baev, and I'll talk today about uh, how to make a LVM, RISC-V, uh, compiler more performant for everyone. LVM is a great uh, compiler and tool chain. Um, and right out of box, uh, it uh, delivers uh, excellent uh, runtime performance, code size, compile time, debug support, and other things. Um, it is relatively easy to add uh, new analysis and new optimization passes. And with a focused uh, effort and good compiler team, uh, we can accomplish uh, substantial improvements in the runtime. And one proof point is uh, uh, AMD-based uh, AOVM compiler, which is used for all spec submissions on uh, AMD-based systems. And uh, last but not least, uh, there is a large uh, group of enthusiastic LVM developers. Uh, this talk uh, will primarily focus on performance aspects of uh, compiler for RISC-5. Uh, and uh, my uh, goal is to motivate uh, RISC-5 uh, companies and academic institutions to collaborate and contribute uh, towards further improving LVM. Uh, until Recently, I led uh, Sci-5 LVM compiler development. Uh, before that, uh, I was involved in uh, Qualcomm LVM compiler to build a strong uh, compiler for the new, at that time, uh, AR64 processor. And uh, I started my career at uh, HP uh, working on proprietary HP compiler for Itanium processor in the area of uh, backend. So, in my opinion, uh, these are some high impact um, areas for community contributions. I'll start with auto vectorization algorithms and cost models uh, simply because. Uh, on data parallel application, they tend to deliver very strong performance impact. Of course, for every new processor, scheduling models and backend optimizations are important, and uh, uh, such algorithms deliver consistent improvements uh, on both uh, scalar and vectorizable code. And of course, uh, compiler performance to uh, uh, important right now simply because there are scarcity of uh, RISC-V hardware and uh, having uh, good tools uh, can really shorten compiler development cycle. Let's start with scheduling model and what is the current state. Uh, in LVM uh, upstream compiler, there are only three uh, models. Uh, and the first one is um, Rocket. Uh, this is the first and very simple model for RISC-5. Uh, the second one uh, is, uh, uh, came from uh, Sci-5-7, uh, uh, and it actually modeled the intelligent X280 processor from Sci-5, and it is really production quality model. Uh, and right now, it serves as de facto RISC-5 generic model. And there is... Um, 32-bit uh, microcontroller uh, core model from Syntacore. Know that there is no uh, model for out-of-order processor, and we know that uh, out-of-order processor deliver highest performance, so we definitely need to have one soon. Uh, as a matter of comparison with uh, ARM 64-bit, uh, there are more than 20 models uh, right now, so we need to work to add uh, such models for RISC-5. Why do you need more scheduling models uh, for RISC-V implementation? Um, first, uh, um, we can test and verify for performance impact some generic RISC-V patches. Second, uh, we can compare different algorithms on different implementations. And in general, directly and indirectly, uh, more models will lead to more uh, backend optimizations. So, uh, ARM64 uh, uh, has not only 20 models right now, but it also has uh, more than 20 
target-specific optimization for ARM implementation. And uh, one challenge here is to fully uh, model all RBV extensions uh, in one particular a case in point is set line instructions for which we uh, most likely you need uh, changes in uh, uh, table gen. Uh, another good area for collaboration and contribution is global instruction selection. Uh, there are many uh, advantages uh, of uh, global ISO over existing uh, selection DAC. Uh, first, uh, it has uh, better source code organization uh, and uh, faster compile time, which leads to easy uh, way to triage bugs and uh, to maintain the code. Uh, then, because of the global uh, nature, global score of uh, instruction selection, there is potential for performance improvement. And finally, uh, because uh, developers for ARM uh, and PowerPC started several years ago on these projects, uh, these five developers can learn from this uh, initiative. Uh, I like to say that this is a long-term project uh, because you need to replace a huge legacy uh, infrastructure. Uh, more importantly, uh, you need to re-implement many optimizations that are based on existing SCEDAC just to be uh, comparable in performance. Otherwise, uh, we won't be allowed to make the switch. And uh, hopefully, uh, during that uh, transition period, uh, we'll need to analyze for additional opportunities uh, new for uh, selection DAC. Uh, Sci-5 started uh, to uh, implement uh, global ISO for integer instructions, so uh, there is uh, room for contribution from other companies to continue with floating point instruction and vectors, and eventually with uh, implementing optimizations. Uh, Let's move to auto vectorization for risk five. Last year, uh, Kole Panchenko gave uh, a very good introduction to both loop optimizer and SLP optimizer for risk five vectors. And in parallel, there is a substantial initiative uh, going in LVM community to uh, formalize uh, one basic structure on vectorizer, namely VPLAN. And uh, last month at LVM developers meeting, uh, uh, Florian presented uh, status update and future roadmap for uh, VPLAN, so I recommend to uh, check this out. Uh, one challenge for risk five vectors is that uh, it is scalable vectors, while a vector, ve a vectorizer and VPLAN was initially developed uh, for SIMD, which is fixed uh, length vectors. So uh, proper integration with uh, existing framework uh, is challenging and it definitely it will take time and we need more contribution in that area. So my thesis here is that for best performance, uh, different loops would likely require different algorithms for vectorization on different RVV implementation. Uh, so uh, there will be no simply uh, one algorithm that works best for everything. Uh, so uh, as a community, you need to do proper space uh, exploration of a large quantity of benchmarks and applications to determine which uh, uh, algorithms are best for which uh, si situation. And uh, our experience uh, has shown that uh, cost model is very important for end-to-end uh, -end performance. So moving to cost model, we need cost model to determine uh, should we vectorize or not vectorize the loop? Also, uh, to choose a particular vectorization algorithm. And uh, also, we can invoke cost model both at compile time and at runtime. Uh, for the last couple of years, there have been many patches to add cost for various risk 5 instructions, but uh, the work was mostly driven by outliers, fixing regressions. Uh, we propose a more systematic way to enable uh, cost model for vectorizer for a new processor, uh, given some insight from uh, study by Angela Pochel for Neon, AVX, uh, and SVE. Uh, so at Highlight, uh, we start with a large collection of kernels, loops, 
and for which loop we compute uh, estimated uh, speed up by cost model statically, and also we measure the actual speed up on the, our hardware. And we plot uh, this in a diagram shown on the right. Uh, we see uh, kernels, loops with uh, largest um, deviation, and uh, tune and fix those, and then re repeat the exercise to improve Pearson correlation coefficient between two sets. Uh, and we uh, iterate until we reach uh, some highest number of uh, these co coefficients. Uh, high to uh, one is the better. Or alternatively, uh, we can try to minimize uh, the false positive, uh, which are here, right? And also false negatives uh, on the vertical uh, uh, gray area where our model predicts uh, no performance speed up, but actual performance is high. So obviously, in this case, we need to fix the cost model. Uh, now, another interesting area is uh, vectorization of uncounted loops. One uh, important parameter for loop is trip count. And uh, if the trip count of a loop is uh, numbers like 64, which is multiple of vector width, we uh, compiler usually generate one body, vectorized body. That's easy. Uh, when trip count is constant, but uh, not multiple of vector length, uh, we typically generate uh, one main uh, loop body and remainder, uh, which we either keep scalar or fully unroll. The next uh, case is when uh, trip count is not known at compile time, but uh, it is known at runtime. So for that case, we also need to insert runtime check to guide between scalar and vector version. And the most difficult case is loop with trip count, which is unknown even at the point of execution. And uh, the main reason could be uh, side exits from the loop and also non-linear uh, induction variable update or exit condition. So uh, here I show string compare, which uh, has this uncounted loop inside. And uh, I want to mention two things. First of all, uh, we uh, have successfully vectorized uh, this function in loop uh, because they are vector instruction. And second, there is only uh, one loop, right, from here to there and no remainder loops. So we accomplish the goal uh, with single loop, even in this uh, uncounted case. Uh, and the main reason for that is the unique uh, uh, instruction in uh, Sci-5, namely fault only first loads, which execute like normal loads, but allow us to access data memory which uh, might be partially invalid without triggering a trap. So, for example, you can get one, two, three elements out of you know, four element vectors uh, and then proceed with subsequent vector instruction on this uh, partial uh, vector without uh, triggering exception. The next uh, step, of course, uh, is to automatically do this uh, transformation because the listing I showed is uh, done manually by experienced RISC-V uh, engineer. So the uh, next step is to uh, do this in auto vectorizer and in code gen. And of course, to handle much more complex loops than the one uh, for string compare. Uh, we, uh, we can definitely uh, have uh, given good code size because there's no reminders and we need to make sure that performance is uh, also superior. Uh, another interesting area is polyhedral methods uh, for IVV, uh, mostly for academic institution and graduate uh, students. Um, we uh, have in LVM a poly project which because of the uh, perceived compile time and poly IR may not be uh, easy to integrate. Um, however, it in general gives very good vectorization. So 
uh, we need to repeat or uh, discover such uh, uh, methods for RVV. Even though they may, they may not end up in production compiler, they can be used for uh, upper bound. Uh, we can also compare RM SV to RVV. Uh, and the good thing is that uh, if and when MLIR comes, uh, part, becomes part of uh, LVM compiler, uh, integration will be much easier. And uh, Polygase, one academic uh, project from MIT and France uh, uh, in Rio, is the first step in that direction. Uh, and the last but not least is compiler performance. And uh, LVM uh, uh, includes uh, a tool called MCA that use scheduling models to estimate performance for a specific processor. And uh, uh, on, the, on the left, uh, uh, it shows uh, that it report various uh, statistics about uh, instruction cycles, microbe, and so on. And uh, the example is the loop body for the string compare example. There is a certain limitation because MCA is only statically uh, static, only uh, is statically based tool and does not uh, involve runtime information, so it cannot handle multiple basic block or uh, loop iteration. Uh, and therefore, uh, recently, a new tool was proposed that combines MCA and uh, dynamic nature of QEMU that uh, tends to overcome such limitations. So this is summary uh, of my talk. Uh, definitely, there are many exciting opportunities uh, to further improve performance of uh, RISC-5 compilers, not only in the area that I discussed today, but in other in all places of compiler, and I'd like to use this opportunity to thank Sci-5 compiler team for their productive work and various partners, uh, library uh, performance in uh, Sci-5 as well, and special thanks to Philip, Alex, and uh, Jerov for their uh, interesting discussion on LVM. Thank you. All right.